Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Healing Ties 2.0, featured on the Whole Care Network and on UK Health Radio, the world's number one talk health radio. I'm your host and presenter, Christopher McClellan, and you just might know me as the Bowtie Guy. On this episode of Healing Ties 2.0, we feature, I have to admit, my good friend Jody O'Donnell Ames. Jody is a professional speaker, wellness and empowerment coach, author, podcaster, and a tireless advocate for Lou Gehrig's disease, rather ALS. She is also the founder and current board member of Hope Loves Company, a nonprofit organization committed to providing educational and emotional support to children and young adults who have had or have a loved one battling ALS in their lives. Jody is also a delegate to the 2021 United Nations Conference of Women and has a powerful story to share with us today about gratitude to latitude. I know you're going to love Jody's story. Well, greetings, Jody, and welcome to another episode of the Healing Ties podcast. It, uh, oh God, I'm just got, I got goose pimples because I'm visiting with one of my longstanding friends. And you're you know, here. thank you for having me once again. You know, we've been, um, we've been doing this a lot and I absolutely love it. Oh, we're going to get into all that because I'm one of your, uh, coaching clients and health and wellness. And we'll get into that a little bit uh, later here on the podcast. But as I'm prone to do, Jody, with all my guests, how are you creating healing ties? Wow, such a great question. And we should all start our day with that exact question. So I am creating healing ties really in every single thing I do. I actually just posted about this, but everything that I do and everything that I've ever done has been about serving others and utilizing my skills either as a volunteer or professionally. So I am doing my best to support others in areas that they feel um, stuck. And... We can get stuck in a lot of different areas. Oh, my goodness, yes. Especially in these times. <laughs> COVID has certainly changed the way we look at things. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I know quite a bit about your background. And I know that service is really a, a major part of your makeup. But I'd I'd like to dig in a little bit deeper and and I'd really like you to share with our listeners your story your caregiving story thank you for that chance and you know when I really think about it um, before I get into my ALS experience and the loss of my husband Kevin my healing ties journey began when I was really young I was or I thought like someone and was someone who served from an early age. That was most important to me. Um, but with Kevin, uh, we we met in the 80s and married in the 90s. And soon after, a few years after we were married and we had a child, um, my late husband Kevin was diagnosed with ALS. ALS is a terminal illness and it robs the... Um, the person's ability to talk, walk, eat, and breathe. And so caregiving is um, a very big part of the ALS journey. And I was blessed to be a caregiver. Um, I always say that it's an experience that we are never truly ready for and haven't asked for. However, it's one of the most... um, It's one of the most um, giving and um, personal and human experiences we can ever share with someone on so many levels. So it was it was a blessing to be a caregiver to Kevin as he battled ALS. And sadly, we lost him in 2001. And my caregiving experiences have not only um, gone on, but have only increased since then. 
as all my listeners know, I always like to end a podcast, and we're not ending it here; we're just starting. <laughs> but it's a you know it's a very similar you know, it's, you know stories. Our stories interchange uh, as as just about every every caregiver story interchanges with one another. But one of the things I like to say. Uh, as I close out all my podcasts, as my listeners know, I've created a life to love after caregiving ends by being with awesome people like you, meaning the audience. And today I, I am changing that uh, statement just a little bit because you've created a life to love after caregiving ends. <laughs> well, thank you. I... We are very similar. Uh, we have used our experiences to to help others, and that's very healing um, in so many ways. And I believe that, yes, everything that I've done since Kevin has passed has been to utilize my experiences to benefit others, um, whether it means my mindset, caregiving, um, community but we can't do this alone caregiving is hard and it's isolating so helping people to find their resources and being a resource are both a big part of who I am and I was fortunate to have people there for me and so was Kevin so it's my honor to continue that that love and that service as you so eloquently put and don't you feel like advocacy is one of those roles that we take on in caregiving? That once it ends, advocacy then turns into a healing process. I absolutely agree with that. You know, there's a saying in the ALS community that we are a club that no one wanted membership to. <laughs> <laughs> Yet, here we are, and a large percentage of us continue to advocate long after our loved ones have passed. And I think that it's healing, and I think that it's empowering. It gives voice to our experiences, and it's, it's an important part of recognizing everything that happened and giving voice to that experience in hopes that it helps others. So yeah, I, I appreciate that because advocacy is a huge part of my life. But I want to I personalize this a little bit more because I get it. You know, it helps others. Um, and one of the things in that we've all experienced as caregivers is trying to find that uh, that journey, that path that helps us. Because we're so focused on caring for somebody else that we forget to care about ourselves. And, and in, in kind of a strange way, you know, advocacy, while we're advocating for others and we're advocating to, to bring awareness, the advo advocacy... Uh, is really something that allows us to create the life after caregiving ends that is empowering. I believe that's true. And, you know, adv adv advocacy has many meanings. And as mm -hmm. you just touched upon, it's even advocating for our own wellness and figuring out how to provide self-care after you've given mm. everything, um, body, mind, and spirit to someone in need. So tell and, us about what you created from your caregiving experience. Hope Loves Company? Oh, yes. I was, <laughs> I was leading you into that. You mean so. the logo that I wear on my arm? The logo, the, the, the that logo, the tattoo logo yes. that you wear on your eye. Wait, revealing yes. it to millions of people that you have a I, tattoo. It's I know, and um, 
And, you know, you might want to consider that one day. I'm just putting it out there. I uh, you know. You just have to think about that. I'll go with my other four that I have. So. <laughs> there you go. It's a nice compliment. Um, yeah, so Hope Loves Company. I created Hope Loves Company from my home, where we are now. And um, it is the only nonprofit in all of the United States with the mission of providing both educational and emotional support to children and young adults who either have had or have someone living with ALS. And basically what that means is really thinking about the programs that support a child caregiver. So with ALS, if you think of a a general home, you may or may not have two parents. You may have one to three or four children. Um, Someone is terminally ill and you know, what happens in that process? Someone loses the ability to talk, walk, eat, and breathe, and it takes a village. Everyone has to step in. So Hope Loves Company was created instead of Misery Loves Company. Um, right. Play on words there. There you um, go. For those of us who are old enough <laughs> to recognize <laughs> <laughs> Misery Loves Company. Um, but to to provide programs that recognize children as caregivers and to honor them in their role and many times whether parents want to um you know or or think that they may or may not include children as caregivers you know many say we don't want our children to be caregivers but when push comes to shove children are providing care and in our experiences about 90 percent of the children are providing care and in the last year and a half due to covid that has only increased so if you think about a family which is vulnerable because someone has a terminal illness um, our families have not gone anywhere they haven't had some of them haven't had nurses in the home Um, and these are families that need daily help. Um, you know, someone with ALS may need help eating, dressing, um, Mm -hmm. bathing, all of those things. So, so children become a part of that care. And before Hope Loves Company, no one was really talking about the children and how they can be supported in this experience as well. And so we're really proud to offer many programs. Our premier program is Camp HLC. And I am going to Camp HLC Connecticut this weekend. Awesome. So I know, I know. I have to dust off my camping gear and my galoshes, <laughs> my umbrella and my um, backpack and all of those good things. And I get to hang out with families this weekend have fun, um, share experiences, and and really make sure they feel supported and appreciated. You know, there's a kind of a, I don't know if misnomer is the right word or lack of an awareness, uh, but there's this thought that caregiving is centered only around uh, seniors. Right. And it's much, caregiving is much broader than that. We are doing our best, Chris, to to end that misnomer as you just shared. Caregiving is, I mean, originally people thought of it only as assistance with people as they grow grew older, right? Mm-hmm. But caregiving is even being a mom as a care as a, you are a caregiver, right? You're, right. You're providing mm-hmm. care to your children, um, and it's when others are dependent on you for daily needs you know for for simple living um you know daily living and and so caregiving can be many things and when we think about it we're all caregivers in one way or another in one way or another we're we're and we're like rosalind carter said you know there's four types of people in the world and we're and we're you know we're either our caregiver going to need a caregiver uh, it's it's inevitable mm-hmm. um, and it's something that 
is often unprepared for. I agree. You know, we don't, um, none of us like to talk about these traumas and challenges that happen to us or might happen to us, right? We, we go about our, our day with hopes and dreams of the future. We're planning, we're creating, and then something happens. And um, knowing that there is this whole a wonderful whole care network of, of caregiving resources truly helps because you're right, and I'll have to check out that quote. We are all going to be faced with some aspect of caregiving, whether we need it or we're providing it in our lives. And it's good to think about it a little bit to to be prepared. Having that thought process in your head, um, uh, planning ahead uh, is invaluable, but we have to plant the seed. And that's why we do what we do, uh, to have these discussions, to share our experiences, to share our stories. And I know this is kind of a broken record that my listeners will say, but, you know, it's through story sharing where diversity meets the road to collaborate on a common cause. And we find out through our stories that, you know, we're just we're really not that much different, whether it's our listeners in England or across the world or in the neck of the woods here in the United States. We all have a story and we can all relate to it and we learn a little bit more about each other. It's the biggest part of being human, right? We all have our stories. And, um, you know, I just said to my husband this morning, the more that I talk to people, the more that I coach, the more that I speak, I recognize that we are all in this journey together. There are some simple things we want, right? We want to be loved. We want to love. And we want to feel valued. Right. Right. And, and our stories help to give voice to all of that. And also our stories help to unite us and encourage us because no matter what, there will be challenges. And it's helpful to, to read about ways, different ways that people address those challenges. And I'm 55 years old. I'm still learning every single day. You're a spring chicken. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I am learning every day, and I'm amazed. I mean, it, I did not even know what an empath was until I was 47. Right. I didn't know, and, and then being an empath, which just means that I'm intuitive and I'm sensitive to people's feelings and their energy, something that I didn't define was what made me such an amazing caregiver. And you think about that. Think about that, sure. Think about that. It's a term that I didn't even know what it was, right? Until I gave my TED Talk, my TEDx, in 2019. And, you know, a few years before that, I recognized what that was. And that exact characteristic is what made me such an amazing caregiver. And I thought, everybody, everybody thinks this way, right? Everyone's... 10 steps ahead of something. Everyone is, right. you know, looking at a room and, and feeling the energy and finding out where I'm needed. And no, <laughs> no, not everyone does that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting how much we all have to learn about ourselves. And that takes time and that takes meditation, self-care, self-love, and just some quiet space to do that. Uh, and I, I definitely want to get into those subjects, and we and we will. But there's something I want to go back to, that I think is important for our all of our listeners to to know. And sure. you have your weekend coming up in Connecticut with the uh, uh, with the camp. I, I'd really like you to, as as best as we can do on uh, audio and radio, I kind of create a a visual uh, of what. A weekend, a Hope Loves Company weekend is like for these kids. Wow. Steal my heart with that vision. I knew that was going to happen. So, <laughs> Yeah, it's hard for me to share that without being teary-eyed. So if you think about it, I mean, even today I got a call from Georgia. So you're talking about people all over the United States who get this diagnosis, and many of them with 
children and grandchildren. And, you know, what do parents think? Parents and grandparents, they just want to make sure their kids are okay. So, you know, we gather these families in a way that, um, you know, no one wants to be a, a member of, as I said earlier. Yet we gather because of ALS, but we gather in hope and we gather in community and we gather in friendship and we come together on a Friday evening. We have a meal together. We do a meet and greet so we get to know each other. And then Saturday we play games and challenge ourselves and connect in our group shares, which are age, you know, our or we break the, the campers into different ages and we talk about what it is to to be affected by ALS or to s- support someone with ALS. And we have these conversations and so many of the children who come to our programs have never met another child until that moment. And you, know, you think of the power <laughs> of so a... amazing. <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> you think of the power of a nine-year-old traveling from Massachusetts to Connecticut to meet another nine-year-old and then bunking all weekend with that nine-year-old and connecting on a level that no one at school, (laughs) no one at school has any idea what is going on in his or her home. And just that in itself to me is a gift. The rest is all icing on the cake. The rest is all amazing too, but to know that you're not alone and isolated in this to know that there's another child who understands what it feels like to have a mommy or daddy with ALS is it's just everything well Casey you know the 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 parallels in caregiving are just it really is amazing because you think even though there if you just look at this some of the I always hate going to statistics but if there's 53 million family caregivers in the United States alone and I know we have international listeners that so that I feel that number is 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 small one of the traits is we always think that we're the only ones doing it because it's new and then to be able to meet somebody that gets it it, it's a a immediate sense of relief that you feel like you're not alone and I, I, I could just imagine I, I could just imagine what these kids are experiencing when they see their own image in in a um, in a contemporary yeah yeah it's again and again at the end of the weekend we hear the stories of the gratitude and the, the relief and the comfort that um, they had this experience and they want to do it again and they want to stay connected to their new friends and peers who understand. You know, it, truly, it's that latitude <laughs> to gratitude. It's that latitude to gratitude. Yeah, my podcast right here. <laughs> um, we'll get to that one too. Yeah, yeah, we'll get, to, we'll get to that as well. But, but you know, it, it has me thinking, Chris, and this has been recommended to me and, and, um, I will add this to my uh, coaching and I know this is jumping ahead, but I've been, I've been a caregiver in some way, shape or form all my life, um, including within my own family. That's another story, but, you know, growing Mm -hmm. up and within my own family. And so coaching, caregiving coaching is something that I, I feel called to do, um, to support others. So, you know, this, there's a reason that we're connecting and that we continue to connect. And there are so many ways that our lives are unfolding simultaneously. And I'm just grateful. I just want to share it here that I'm grateful for all that you've created with the whole care network and, and recognizing before most of us did the importance of caregiving resources and, and uniting in this role. So thank you. Oh well, you know, we've we've gone back a long time, and we've we've shared uh, we shared great stories and great memories, and um, and now we're you know we're, we're working together, and we're bringing we're bringing hope to those uh, 
like ourselves in life after caregiving. So doing our best. Doing our best. So <laughs> what I'd like to do right now, I want to take our break. And then when we come back, uh, I'm going to ask you uh, one fun fact about you that our <laughs> listeners don't know that Ooh. you're going to reveal. There, Everybody's on the edge of their seat wanting to know. <laughs> Ooh, I and can't then wait. we want to get into your uh, you, the second life you've created after caregiving ends. And we'll talk more about health and wellness and uh, actually empowerment and wellness. Does that uh, sound like a good plan oh, for you? Sounds like so much fun. I'm going to have to think about it. Think about Put my answer. Cap on. <laughs> Put okay. my thinking cap on. <laughs> okay, you're listening to Healing Ties, featured on the Whole Care Network and on UK Health Radio, the world's number one talk health radio. We'll be right back. Hey, it's uh, Christopher McClellan. You just might know me as the bow tie guy. Healing Ties 2.0. On Healing Ties, we visit with people from all over the globe who share their stories because it's through story sharing where diversity meets the road to collaborate in a common cause. And if you'd like to share your story on Healing Ties, email me direct at thebowtieguy at healingties.com. We would love to share your story to your health happiness, and prosperity. Next week on Healing Ties, join us as we visit with Xander Craig and Jennifer Hinuis from the LGBT Caregiving Center and as we talk about the specific needs for LGBT seniors and their caregivers. <laughs> Well, welcome back, everybody, and we are continuing my, well, not my, it's our <laughs> wonderful conversation, conversation with Jody O'Donnell Ames. And Jody, okay, you're on the spot. This is the moment. L the listeners are on the edge of their seat. They want to know what's that fun fact that, uh, that we don't know about that you just I... want to reveal right here on Healing Ties 2.0. I have a list, but I'm going to share one. Um, okay. And it's something that I am so open to pursue even today, but I have been an extra in movies and have loved it. Loved it. I had my um, headshots done in 1997 and then proceeded to do some extra work. I'm a still member of Michael Lemon casting, and I'm always <laughs> in my spare time, which is usually around one in the morning. <laughs> I am looking up different opportunities because I have had this vision of me being on stage and performing for a long time. And um, someday I'm going to make it a reality. Okay, so what, <laughs> what movies, have, what, what are some of the oh. movies you've been in as extras? Okay, so IQ right here in Princeton, close by my house, which was mm -hmm. um, about Albert Einstein. Mm -hmm. Snake Eyes with Nicolas Cage. Yeah, Ooh. those are, those are those are the two big ones. Mm -hmm. A few of the others um, were overseas, so yeah. no one has heard of them. But th that the well, one, we, Jody, we have international listeners. We're on UK <laughs> Health Radio, the world's number one talk health radio. Oh so my goodness! All of yes. our all of our <laughs> listeners in the United Kingdom, and they they, um. they 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 might they might know. So you know, just again. Or they the might have, or they seats. might have a role for me in in the. United or they Kingdom. might have a role for maybe we, maybe we can have a do a package deal. You oh, never know. yeah, yeah. I say That's one of my it. aspirations as well, as you know. So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So. Two fur. We'll do a two fur. A two fur, <laughs> for sure. No, but, uh, um, you know, I, I I think that's that, that's what I love asking these uh, uh, <laughs> these revealing questions because. You know, the first part of the show is always a little bit 
it, it's kind of, it can often get intense and and uh, really thought provoking. And I kind of loosen the second half. We kind of loosen up, and those um, fun facts really help uh, help us get into the mood for for the second segment. And that's kind of because we're we're going to shift because as you've created a life to love after caregiving ends with Hope Loves Company. You've also created a new life to love, another new life to love with your empowerment and wellness coaching program that I am just tickled to death to be a part of. Oh, I'm so glad you're a part of it. And thank you for allowing me to share. Yeah, you know, um, for everything, there is a season. And I absolutely loved creating and establishing Hope Loves Company. But I am a creative person, so I continue to create. And I'm also not the best at database entry and <laughs> <laughs> marketing and all of those things. So Those minor we, details. Those There's, minor those, details those, of running a nonprofit. creativity people, I like my, yeah, we get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so once we had a team, established a team at Hope Loves Company, um, I decided in January to step away as an employee and become a volunteer and um, started JOA Speaks On. So I'm now the president of JOA Speaks On. This may be the first time I actually verbalized that. And um, I love it because JOA Speaks On is that I'm, has two meanings. I speak on wellness. I speak on ALS. I speak on adversity. I speak on... Um, commitment and it also means that I'm speaking on in my 55th year on this earth I am continue to speak on the things that matter to me right so um, I am a wellness and empowerment coach uh, two things that have always driven driven me I've been a uh, wellness um, guru since the 90s and have learned um, how to create my uh, my best habits and now I'm helping others to do the same and I'm also um, helping people to uh, empower their their lives from where they are to where they want to be so both are are similar because when you're trying to get well, right, when you're trying to create wellness in your life and whatever that means to you, then you're somewhere but want to be somewhere else. You know, you have goals and ambitious, ambitions. And um, and I love to be that support system and to connect with people in this way and to do this work. So it brings me great joy and and um, I'm enjoying my sessions with you as well. Yeah, and let's let's talk a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about the, our session. So to give our listeners really a bird's eye view, well, a, a bird's ear view, since this is <laughs> <laughs> this, since this is radio, uh, I, you know, I'm happy to report, uh, and I've talked about this before in other podcasts. But uh, over the past year, I've um, really had a, a a bad way with atrial fibrillation. And had a an ablation procedure in February of 2021, and as we're recording this podcast, we're, you know, I'm now six months past that. Uh, and part of the procedure, while it, it it's helped alleviate the AFib, it's not completely gone away. You know, you get these flutters, and and how I like to describe it to to people is think about. When you're starting your car, you go to your car and the battery's dead. Are the alternators dead? And you keep, you know, you keep trying to turn it over. You know, rrr, rrr, rrr. well, that's what how these flutters have been for me. And and the doctor, had, doctor had said this is going to go on probably for six months. Well, in that time, uh, you know, we started talking about health and wellness and what. Wh- what I might need to do to um, to better improve myself for health. Because again, it comes back to self-care and advocating for yourself. And through your um, kindness and expertise and coaching, 
uh, I'm happy to report that I've lost 25 pounds with another Woo! with another 25 to go and and um, you know it, it, coaching and and philosophies it, you know it works different for different people but you, I think what's important and I'm and this is where I want to go with this you, you have to find that one person that you connect with that you absolutely. can trust absolutely absolutely and I I just want to kind of add a couple things to what you just said. First of all, your first statement about your medical history. You know, people think, I can't do this because of this, um, or I'm afraid to do this. And under a doctor's supervision, of course, it's even more of a reason to take control of your wellness. Right. And doing so with a doctor who has this experience and knowledge and with a coach who listens to what you're saying and who works with you to address not just the weight loss. That's just one, one part of this picture. It, 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 actually, it, it's, a, it's a tiny part of the picture. It's a tiny part of the picture. You know, we have our own thoughts and our own voices, and sometimes we get in our own way. You know, our thoughts get in our own way. And I'm obviously not talking about any one person here, Chris. I'm talking about myself. I'm talking about, right. you know, whether it's losing weight or starting a new job or um, making a post about self-confidence. Sometimes we get in our own way, and we need someone to guide us. Um. I'm the poster child for that. Yeah. <laughs> if if there was anybody that would be hit by their own car, it would be me. Well, you know, we 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 can talk about this because we recognize it. And it may not even be something that's a conscious thought for some of us. Right. And having as you the second thing that you said is having a coach that you feel like you can relate to who A listens to you. And B, doesn't just provide these resources without discussion and without some tough questions. Right. You know, this is, this is a, it's a, it's professional, but it's also a friendship um, that, of trust, that allows these tough questions to be addressed, to be asked, and for guidance in areas that you may not have even realized you need guidance and I can share personally from you know I now have a number of clients that I learn during the sessions I might right. think of something that wow you know um here I am suggesting this yet I haven't done this in six months <laughs> right so mm -hmm. so we're all learning together we're all growing together and I personally like to address this with a body, mind, spirit approach, whatever that means to the person with whom I'm working. Because I found that I can't do one without the others. It is holistic. It's, whole, it's, it's, a, it's a holistic look internally and externally. And it's not, um, it's not something that... Uh, it, it, it's not full of regrets. It's just full of reality. Absolutely. Absolutely. You said that so well. It's really an opportunity to learn and grow. And through, you know, having a, an accountability partner and someone to listen and to talk through these issues, that's mm -hmm. where progress takes place. That's truly where progress takes place. And I think many times during the conversations, my clients think of it themselves. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm ready to say something and they say it because it becomes aware, it becomes clear to them what they need to do. And, and I think, and this is, I'm, going to give you a, a compliment on the air here. I think one of your uh, one of your best attributes 
in this whole process has been your ability to listen. Listening skills are a part of communication that is often <laughs> often goes without uh, uh, compliments. And it's often taken for granted. But you have, you are attuned. I, I, I can only speak for myself, but if I, if I was to book all your clients on a, on a Healing Ties podcast, I would be willing to, and I'm not a betting person, but I would be <laughs> willing to bet that all of them would say one of your best attributes is your ability to listen. Well, thank you for those kind words. I made a commitment a long time ago in my professional life that in order to serve, and customer service is huge in my um, opinion, and I've had many opportunities where I feel I felt cheated from customer service. Mm -hmm. And so... I made it a personal objective and a professional objective that in order to provide what anyone needs, whether it's at Hope Loves Company or as a speaker or as a coach, I need to listen to what the other person is saying that he or she needs to feel um, empowered because that's different for everyone. Uh, and, and that's really the key in recognizing that, that it is going to be different for everyone. We're not, you know, we come from different families, different backgrounds, and we may want the same things, love, care, commitment, health, wellness, body, mind, and spirit. Uh, it, but our path to that journey is going to be different absolutely and what works for one person doesn't work for another so i can't just provide you know follow this regimen this is going to work great for you that's not the case because the way we process information the way we um, handle goals and um, objectives the way we value activity and the way we um, understand discipline, it's all different. <laughs> it's, it's all, all different. different. It's all different. And, and you mm-hmm. can't just, it's not one, si- one side serves all. It has to be a discussion, has to be listening. And, and I thank you for that, that compliment because I do try really hard to be that person. So give our listeners a, a, a perspective on uh, your coaching services and, and how they might be able to, uh, uh, to access your services. Sure. Thank you. So my website is joaspeaksong.com, and my information is there. But for someone who... Um, is looking to make a transition that can be, as I said, wellness or a career. Um, It could be um, someone who's trying to establish a nonprofit. I mean, there there are so many ways that we can create wellness and we can also empower ourselves. Um, I have several sessions, several um, opportunities, but my one right now that has been The most requested is my monthly sessions that um, my clients and I meet twice a month and have a one-on-one Zoom. And I typically take notes. I do take notes during that session. And then I follow up with um, a review of our notes as well as something to do because we can learn We can gather information, but unless we create action steps, we don't grow and learn. So um, action steps are key, and that's part of having a coach, right? Creating those action steps and following through. Mm -hmm. And then coming back the next time and sharing how those steps worked, what worked, what didn't work, 
and tweaking once again. <laughs> yeah, because we, we get in this mindset that we think, uh, and this happens in caregiving too, and this is where the analogy is. We think that um, we're the only ones doing it and we're alone and we don't need any help. Mm. <laughs> and then you find out 35, 40 pounds later. Right. Um, food becomes a comfort or alcohol becomes a comfort. Mm -hmm. And you lose that uh, introspection about your own health and wellness. And before you know it, um, you're kind of off the rails. I think that um, what has happened to our world in the last year and a half has only increased our need to connect, find out how to provide self-care, mm -hmm. how to have hope in our lives, and to have goals because so many of us right now are anxious and depressed and we feel stuck. And right. that's where having a coach who specializes in that process is is so very helpful. I have a coach myself. Um, I don't think, you know, you're, if you have a coach, that person should understand the importance of having a coach. That's, exactly. That is key. That is key because if I don't improve my own self, how can I encourage others to do the same? Right? Jody O'Donnell Ames, <laughs> living life with a purpose. Yes, absolutely. That's my TEDx topic of 2000. That's my right, TEDx <laughs> topic. So, so again, uh, let our, all of our listeners know how they can be in touch with you and, sure. and your fabulous uh, podcast. Yeah, so I have a podcast right here, loving it on Whole Care Network. I'm actually doing two, two interviews tomorrow, Gratitude to Latitude, Stories of Hope and Resilience. Um, thank you for supporting my efforts there. You, you are the reason that I have a podcast, Chris. Um, also, I am on all social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And my website is joaspeakson.com. You can... Um, connect with me there um, and I, I really am blessed to do what I do each and every day I thank you for allowing me to share what I do um, and I look forward to connecting with more people to learn about how I can help them and support them in what they do well I appreciate all your support and and helping me get back to good health and wellness but more so I sincerely appreciate our friendship. Thanks so much, Jody, for joining me today. Thank you. You take care. Now on her second career after caregiving has ended, Jody O'Donnell Ames is a true inspiration to all of us. And be sure to check out her Gratitude to Latitude podcast and learn more about her work as a wellness and empowerment coach. And I want to thank you for listening today for this episode of Healing Ties. And if you'd like to share your story on Healing Ties, email me direct at thebowtieguy at healingties.com. We would love to share your story on Healing Ties. As you know, I'm your presenter and host, Christopher McClellan. I've created a life to love after caregiving ends by being with awesome people like you. And be sure to subscribe to Healing Ties wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. We'll see you for another episode of Healing Ties real soon. Take care. Bye for now.